Hello, hello, Diana here. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, please, please, please bonk that subscribe button. It's just, it's just right down here. Just bonk. Thank you. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so exciting. This toy hauler Tesla. Normally, like this is all camper portion and this is all a toy hauler. And here's a big ramp that comes down. We are converting this toy hauler to a different kind of hauling horsepower. Like as in literally, we're turning the back of this bad boy into a horse trailer. So that ramp will come up. These are all the parts. I just wanted all y'all to see it before it turns into a horse trailer. There is a bathroom, there's a fridge, and this right here goes into the living area. But this is usually a toy hauler and it's gonna be a two stall horse hauler here in a little bit. So I just had to show you guys before it's done. Experiment day one. Yep. <laughs> so this is usually a toy hauler and it's hauling horsepower, but today it gets to haul that kind of horsepower. So we'll show you the inside. The back toy hauler portion has been um, what am I thinking? Modif Rebuilt, modified. It's been modified with a kit that's called the Stable Boy. Ta-da! Look at that! Woo! It's matted so that they don't slip. And you have room right here to walk through. Whoop! And I'm going to fall. Come in here. Here is the outside door. And there's the feeders. Oh my gosh, this is the coolest. Here's the saddle racks. And there's hay storage. Oh, and there's a bridle rack. And then there's room, let me put my stuff down. There's room here, look at the horses have windows, their own fan. Actually, until it's removed, they have a TV on the wall. They have their own toilet. If only we could teach them to use it. But this is the toy hauling portion of the toy hauler. And usually there is, um, cars can go in here and I'll even show you, hold on. Up here is the bed. So when it is a toy hauler and this, um, the stalls are out, that can actually be brought back down as a bed. And then there usually is a couple of couches as well when this is a toy hauler. Because when it's a toy hauler, you can put cars back here, but then you can also have people. Hi, guys. So today we are taking Pep and Sid, the little bald-faced boy right there. We're taking them for their first journey in this bad boy. This little attachment makes it so it's level right here. Oh, nice job covering that hinge. And here's what each one looks like. They're padded on the inside. The floors are reinforced. They're reinforced with a sheet of metal and then non-skid. Padded sides. Feeder. You can tie them with the feeder. And then this is really cool. This is an escape door. So if you need to come in or out through this little door, you can do that. We should have hay up there. Yeah. Hope he's backing out, honey. Okay. <laughs> Yikes. If your heart stopped like mine did, watching my horse slide down that ramp, then I'm gonna show you the solution. Because one of my amazing performance horses had a little slip on a ramp, went down to his knees, shattered both knees, and is unrideable. This happened a few years ago to me. So to see a horse slip on a ramp, I kid you not, my heart stopped. I'm sure you probably did as well. But needless to say, we found a solution to the issue. So as you'll see on the video after the horse slid, we backed this up 
to a manure pile so that the ramp was up a little more and the horses wouldn't slide out. We took it a step further because there just might not always be a manure pile to um, to lessen the the steepness of the ramp. Okay, so now that Pep slid down the ramp, we're thinking it's too steep. So we're gonna back it up by the manure pile so the door hits the manure pile and the um, ramp won't be quite so steep is what we're trying to do. The horses, okay. The horses went in fine as you saw, but coming out is how Nick got injured. So to have a horse backing out and sliding is, is dangerous. We want to ride him and enjoy him, not hurt him. So here's the solution we came up with. Right here, you can see these blue, it looks like it might just be a strip, but it is actually about a half an inch tall and they're grippy. That way a horse cannot slide down it again. Does he fit good? Okay, good. We might need to get um, trailer ties that stay tied so we just get them in and snap them. It's too bad these don't open. That's a, you know what I mean? That's a design that if these open, you can open them up and tie them. Okay, putting it on the poop pile was perfect. They okay. both. Yeah, they both, so we have this little cover so that they can step over that. And then this, let's show you guys. This right here is covering the hinge to this huge thing. So they're, what honey? The gap. That, their little gap there, so their feet don't get stuck. So look how much room they have in this though. There's about a whole arm length before the horse. When he wasn't tied, he kept coming back and forth. There's so much room, so he wasn't sure he was supposed to stand in there. Yeah, usually in my horse trailer, there's a butt bar that's actually touching his butt. So there is a ton of room if you have big horses. This is not a paid ad for this thing, but it is cool as hell, so I can't help talking about it. What encouraged us to do this was we went camping to a state park um, this summer, and I had to haul the truck and trailer with two horses, and he hauled this toy hauler so we could camp in the front of it. So now we can drive together. I'll take you guys back up here and you can see they're having hay. The one thing I would wish that they had, um, in case, okay, in case stable boy, in case stable boy is watching, it would be nice if these opened so you could tie the horses. But the horses are in here, eating, eating hay. It's all kinds of room. When I put this horse in to get out because I, I tied him up and I don't like tying a horse until the butt gate is closed so that they don't pull back and struggle, especially when they've got a big ramp like this. So I walked in with this horse and then I came out this trap gate underneath his feeder and then tied him up because right now we don't have any trailer ties. We'll get trailer ties so it's an easy hitch. Okay, they're in there. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Precious cargo, we're just gonna take them for a spin around a few blocks just so they can get used to it. You know what, honey? I might actually ride back with the horses. Okay. And that way I can, so can call, call you if there's call. any issues. Yeah. Okay guys, wish me luck, cause I'm gonna go back in here with the horses. Just to be safe. As you guys can see, we are moving. Oh my gosh, you guys have never ridden in the back of a horse trailer. They have so much. Oh, I got horse boogers all over me. They have so much faith in us because this is kind of creepy to be back here while it's moving.
a little tidbit. I just talked to Todd in the front. He's only going 45 miles an hour. It feels like 120 back here. So, ah! Easy, guys. That noise you guys hear, like I said, that's just horseshoes hitting the metal. There's nothing wrong. And the horses are probably perfectly used to this, but I gotta tell you, it's weird. And it's, if you watch their bodies, it's a lot of work for them to stay balanced back here around curves and bumps. It's noisy. Gosh, give horses credits for being credit for being so good and so quiet in the trailer. Like my horses can ride the trailer all day, every day. I'm frazzled. I wouldn't want to do this all day, every day. But my horses, my horses can. I admire them for doing this. And think about the amount of faith a horse must have in us to put them in the back of something. This is essentially a metal casket and they're tied up and they just have faith that we're gonna get them to wherever we're going safely. It is not easy to stand up back here. And we're not going that fast. That said we're going 45. So I heard this is something that they do for 4-H kids is make them ride in the back of the trailers to understand how a horse has to work. But I mean, it's a lot of work for them. Like my legs are tired already. One thing too, I have never been an advocate for hauling a horse untied. And here's why I've always thought that it gives them something to lean against. I also agree with their um, the side rails being up, these bump rails, so that they can lean against it if they need to for balance. Remember, they don't have hands. So if you leave your horses untied when you haul them, ride in the back. And you'll see how often they pull back and have to lean against the lead rope or how often they have to or how often they have to lean against the side. Anyhow, keep your horses tied and keep the dividers up so that they have something to lean against for balance because they can't reach their arms out and grab something. And here's another thing that I, I mean, people may say that they agree with keeping a horse untied in the trailer, but also if he were to turn around too much and get his head kinked that far and that we hit a corner or we got, you know, for whatever reason, he could break his neck. So he has to, his body needs to stay like this or if it's a slant load, stay slanted. You don't want their heads turned around and then have something happen and they get their neck kinked or broke or whatever. Just give them all that they need to secure themselves. really hot in the back of a horse trailer. We started out with plenty of ventilation and I did have to open the windows because it's steaming up in here. This trailer did awesome. Um, putting it on something to make the... Well, it was a success besides dad. It was a success. Yeah. Dad uses anxiety pills. Dad's a little anxious, but the horses did fantastic. This um, strip right here is causing issues. We're going to have to remove it because the horses, if a horseshoe hits that, it starts them sliding and they, um, that's why you saw Pep slide earlier as he hit this, cause it's a smooth plastic. And so that we will remove for something grippy because this flooring is grippy. And I usually always haul with shavings to absorb pee, but we thought for the first trip we would bag the shavings. And of course they peed in it. So now we're putting shavings in to absorb said piss. But it was awesome, such a success, such a cool, cool gadget. Now they're gonna have a lot nicer, cleaner ride. I love shavings in the horse trailer. It absorbs the poop and pee a lot better too. These stalls are wider than my horse trailer? By two inches. Wow, that's a lot though for the horses. You were saying they, didn't, they were walking back and forth. Yeah, it seems like they, yeah. 
This is actually two inches wider per stall than my two horse trailer, which is an extra wide, extra tall horse trailer. So that's cool. It's substantially longer this way too, because like I showed you earlier, there's a three foot gap from there. Yeah, we're gonna put butt chains on it. We put chains up because I noticed that my horses are used to a trailer with a solid butt bar. And when I traveled back here with them, they spent a lot of time going forward and backward and forward and backward. So I think that they're really going to like the security. Latch this. Whoop. I think they're really going to like the security of being able to um, lean back on these if they need to. So here's what the stalls look like. Here was the solution to the sliding. Way to go, stable boy. How cool is that? Now that this whole thing is ready, I can't wait for spring. So everybody with that, stay safe, stay healthy, stay surrounded by loved ones, and most of all, stay grateful for all of your blessings. Until next time.